So the big, to me, the big thing for uh, for today is actually that Arduino is finally reaching, you know, 1.0. Yes, I have the finally slide. Um, so, so, so what's 1.0? The idea is that so we we took the Arduino that we've been working on for uh, for a few years. And then we decided that we wanted to stabilize it a little bit. So that if you write a book about Arduino, it doesn't become obsolete after a week. Uh, and or if you're making a class about Arduino, then you don't have to complain that the, your examples don't work anymore because in the meantime we broke it. So we decided to just break it a little bit uh, again and then sort of stop breaking it for a while. So we, I think we're done breaking, more or less. Apparently, just nod, David. Just please nod. Thank, thank you. So we're not breaking it anymore. Um, so if you go to this uh, very uh, handy short address, you can basically find this wiki page where we have published a release candidate. Uh, last night we published it. Um, uh, the sort of release candidate one for Arduino. Uh, what happens is that we're going to give ourselves a month now to basically use work with the community to test if everything works the same as the Arduino that you're used to. And also, um, we give time to the people who are developing libraries uh, to, be, to, to, to ad update them to 1.0 so that we can sort of then pr proceed with uh, uh, like an integrated system that works, that works properly. It has been a long effort, <laughs> which probably started uh, in March 2010, when we invited a number of people to come to New York and discuss with us, you know, what should we do in order to standardize Arduino a little bit. Uh, and, you know, Michael Margolis was there. And, and also in the process, we had the help of a lot of developers. Uh, there are on the developers list in Arduino, which is an amazing resource. Uh, so I have a, my memory is a bit like a goldfish, so I don't know exactly, I don't remember every single name. Uh, Philip Lindsay, you're there, so he, he, he was a great uh, helper on the mailing list, Michael as well. A lot of other people, people that I know only just by uh, sort of nicknames, you know, like on the forum, but like, you know, people have written like 10,000 messages on the forum and I only know them like Grumpy Mike. But then this morning I, I, I found Grumpy Mike and we all took a picture with him and you know, we gave him a t-shirt so it was like a lot of love and everything. <laughs> so, so just to say that you know, we couldn't have done it if we had such a fantastic community to work with in the first place. And, uh, so, and a lot of people who do crazy projects, so they force us to sort of make the whole thing work. Because you know? when you wake up and you read on a blog that somebody actually made a satellite and shot it into space with an Arduino, for the, five, for the first minute you're happy, the second minute you're actually shaking in terror because you're thinking, <laughs> is this gonna explode? And then obviously, it makes you think about debugging in a different way. You know? <laughs> so so we, got a, we got a 1.0 core coming up. We have a new, new sort of refreshed interface for the IDE. The original IDE came very much from the interface of processing. But for example, processing had a stop button that never really did anything. It, so it was confusing for the beginners and everything. So we redesigned the interface. So you can see here the work of Nicolas, Nicolas Zambetti, who is a good friend of us, who was uh, involved in making Arduino at the very beginning when we were in Ivrea. And then you see the work of um, of Todo, George Olivero is our graphic designer, the man who makes the packaging and everything else. So uh, in a few weeks you will see the new retail packaging that he's working on and I think it's very beautiful. It's really, so, so now all these people have helped us work on the, work on the interface. Then, um, you know, Christian Maglie, you are somewhere over there holding a camera, yes. So he's one of our developers and he's, worked on adding a bunch of features to the IDE and the core is an amazing developer who can do backend PHP development then he can do in the next hour he would fix a piece of the core in C++ and then before dinner he will fix the IDE in Java and so you know it's kind of useful to have somebody that can do everything so we thought you know uh, so we have a new core we have a new IDE so we felt um, 
we felt that we had to sort of, uh, if there was something that we could do to sort of make another step forward in the, in the layout of the board, to make it more uh, sort of uh, flexible before we don't change it anymore. Um, so, you know, when I, I, I always try to have meetings with Gianluca, which is the deep, most difficult man to catch in the south of Europe. So sometimes I take long trips in the car so I can talk to him and he can't go away. So, <laughs> so in one of these long trips, we started to figure out how do we... So we decided to make a little change to the... Uh, no, I will not fix this. You know, we're not fixing the, shape, the, the spacing. <laughs> That's not going to happen here. Because there's way too much stuff with this spacing, but uh, and I apologize. I made a mistake seven years ago. You know, it's my fault. <laughs> Shoot me, but um, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, but the idea is that we added a few pins to the configuration of Arduino, which you will see uh, coming out uh, in about four, four to five weeks with the new Arduino Uno and Mega release three, uh, where we basically added. Two more pin on the top line that you can see. So we placed the uh, uh, TWI bus. Uh, I, would want, I would like to say I square C, but then Philips might sue us, so we say TWI. And um, so you can expect to find that bus always in the same place because in different Arduino boards, it was always in a different position. So it's kind of hard to make a shield that can work on multiple boards. So in this way, it becomes also easier to make intelligent shields. They have like processors on board and they can communicate you know, through a higher level pro, pro, um, through a higher level protocol. And then we sort of, you know, we're working on figuring out uh, there are new microcontrollers that we are gonna use that have different voltages. Not all of them run at five volts. It's hard to find sort of high power processors that run at five volts. It's like one part from Atmel on the AVR32, but so it's not easy. So how do we make sure that when you plug a shield, the shield can actually auto detect what's happening? So there is one little pin that sort of tells the, the shield, okay, that the, the board that you're talking to is running at, I don't know, 3.3 volts. So that pin, it's gonna be useful so that the, the shields that we make from now on, we'll also work on other configuration. And then there is a secret pin that I cannot tell you about. <laughs> now actually, there is another pin, but it doesn't do anything. And we put it because we thought, okay, we don't wanna change the connector yet again. So while we're there, let's just put another pin that doesn't do anything. So that if we come up with an idea later on, we just have to connect the wire. And uh, so at the moment is there only for like, you know, to kind of uh, foster our imagination and try to find an intelligent use for it. And so you have this, um, so this is the Arduino Uno R3, nothing major change, which added a little protection diode on the reset circuit, uh, which helps because there were some situation in which Arduino boards had, a, some Arduino boards had trouble switch, uh, while switching on, the reset was a bit, um, sometimes wasn't working properly. It was a strange configuration. He had to add a certain kind of pull up on a certain pin and you know, it's like, and if it's Tuesday and it's raining and then the board doesn't, so okay. But in any case, this is the, this is the new one. So we kind of change the color of the back. So we started to put also some labels on the pins on the back, because why not? So you, we all obviously have a, a, one, a, a Arduino Mega R3, nothing major changed. Um, so one new product that we want to talk about is uh, this Arduino Leonardo. Uh, we added here the sort of recommended price uh, because I know that somebody is gonna ask it about it, so I wrote it down. So the idea is that uh, you see it here with all the connectors mounted, but this should be something that's uh, like a low cost Arduino uh, with no through hole parts. So you sort of mount them yourself, so you reduce the cost even more, and essentially what's happening, we're using this microcontroller, the Artimega 32U4, that has USB on board. So for one, you know, it, it has one less chip on board, so it obviously becomes simpler and cheaper. Um, the other thing is that this having USB native on board, so we worked on a core for, for this uh, particular board that makes the board, for example, behave like a mouse, or it can behave like a keyboard or it can behave like a MIDI interface. So anything that you can think of that can be represented as a uh, USB device, you can then, uh, so we worked on this uh, product. 
with some very talented people. So a gentleman called Peter Barrett, who's uh, from California, who wrote the core for us, which is quite optimized. And then the always amazing Zach Eveland, uh, that at the moment is manning the Arduino uh, table. But he, he worked with us on the Uno last year. So he helped us sort of take the, the work through to the final product. Um, so the idea, again, this one will be available, uh, let's say, in a month from now, um, because we want sort of the, the core and everything to be stable, so then when we release 1.0, it will contain the software for this. Uh, we have a few of these with us, and we will probably giving it out to a couple of people that are active on the developer list, uh, so that they can help us test it, and then we'll sort of, we'll give you a better schedule uh, about that. So we are finally in the final stages of uh, production of the Arduino Wi-Fi Shield. So what we did here, there was a lot of work that was done by the developer community, uh, and in particular, uh, Adrian McEwen, uh, correct? Good, so thank you. And then there was a bit of, uh, there was a bit of Christian, there was a lot of, uh, uh, of David, there was a, a lot of work by two Italian developers who are called Domenico and Claudio, who basically, we, so we worked on a, on a library that can actually, on a new Ethernet library, that can actually make it easy for people to make other network libraries that share some common classes that are now in the course, the concept of an IP address, the concept of a, you know, of a server and a client are now in a more generalized class. So if you have an example that runs on the current Arduino Ethernet with only a few changes, it will also run on the Wi-Fi shield, but somebody could make a library for their own shield that actually requires very little changes. Uh, and again, I gave a preview of the work that we were doing on this one at the previous Maker Ferry in, in, um, in California. Essentially, the way we looked at a lot of this uh, module that are on the market, uh, that are, you know, they give you, you Wi-Fi to serial, we were not happy because you cannot hack it, and if you cannot hack it, it's boring, you know, then you go buy a commercial solution. So we worked and we used this uh, AVR32, it's like a 32-bit microcontroller from Atmel, where the whole uh, TCP IP stack is, is sitting there, and, 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 and it talks to this tiny module that you see in the top right corner from a Swedish company called h and Wireless. So the interesting thing is that, um, Sorry, I was listening to the phone call. Um, so the idea is that being the source code available, you can hack the TCP IP or you can add your own protocol. So my sort of dream is that people add their own, you know, you want to make the Arduino chat with each other on, on, on Jabber, on Google Talk, you just add XMPP into it. So in a way, Arduino moves more and more to become some sort of a scripting language for hardware. When you have like these higher level processors that talk to an Arduino, and in Arduino you write the logic of your application. Um, yeah, so this is again gonna be available in a, in a few weeks. We are just, now that the library is defined and everything is defined, we can just go into the final stage of production. There's also something else that we sort of launched a little bit in, in, uh, during the summer, but it requires a lot of sort of work. Uh, that requires a bit of work in a way, is this Arduino ADK, so it's this mega with an extra chip that makes it work as a, as a USB host. And this was actually originally designed by Google uh, to make accessories for Android mobile phones. So what we did, we just took their design and made it more in line with the Arduino philosophy. And then we decided that we wanted to make it even more easy for people to be able to make accessories. So if you're a software developer and you don't know anything about electronics, then you can buy this and you can buy this toolkit that you see these modules that we make that you can plug on top of the Arduino. So with this kit, which costs obviously more than $79, you don't even need to know anything about electronics. You just plug all the inputs and outputs. You write your code. And there is a section on our lab's website which needs a lot of work, we know. So Philip will send you the source code about the libraries. Um, but we are working on a way that you can develop your Android applications uh, with uh, N accessories using processing. So you don't need to use Eclipse and all of that. And then 
you know, in, our, in the Arduino side, you just plug these modules, so it becomes very, very easy to make a, to make a prototype of an accessory. 